Well, it's the last show of the year. Hell, it's the last day of the year. Goodbye, 2016. Hello, Trump. <laughs> we need 20 more guys, and uh, the game is on. Somebody's going to win that KX2. So uh, let's hit that subscribe button 20 more times, and the game is on. And when you see the subscriptions over 5,000, that means the game is on. So, hey, let's do it. We're talking today about uh, software for the Mac and running your shack off a of Mac. So, all you Windows users, uh, go update your virus software or do whatever and get online with Microsoft support so they can... Uh, stick you on team viewer and fix your computer real good we're going to talk about logging software for the mac and in particular this time i'm talking about mac logger dx is it worth it it's got a high price tag it's 95 dollars and i'll tell you what that's a lot of money to dump into a uh, into a piece of software is it worth it let's take a look for all you Mac users out there that are looking for great logging software today I want to talk about Mac logger DX this is not cheap software but you get what you pay for and if you've already made the decision to go to a Mac uh, you know just exactly what quality is all about. So diving right in, the first thing we notice is uh, you've got your log up there and up in the left hand corner you've got radio controls. It's full radio controls. Um, getting information in there is just as easy as typing in uh, a call sign and it comes right up in your last three calls, you've got their uh, their uh, QRZ pictures and all their information comes right up. Now, moving back over to the control panel. If you've got a rotor, a compatible rotor, and we'll go through that later, uh, you can it'll automatically update there. The radio controls, you have not full radio control, but you've got quite a bit right there on the screen. Uh, you can control which VFO you're on, which mode you want to operate, so you could control the radio from there. You can control splits right there from the screen, and you could decide how big your split is. And if you have an external keyer, you can operate it right there from the screen. Now the center controls are really handy. You have the map version there where you can do 2D, 3D, uh, or Google really. The um, cluster uh, side, you pick whatever cluster you want. Uh, and he's got tons of them set up in there. Under the clusters tab, you can either you pick clusters or you can look at spots. Now, going back to the map feature, as spots come in, they are logged right there on the map automatically and you can click on them right there and tune the radio. You can also use the band, uh, the band mode. I love this because once you're on and you're looking at things, you could decide what band you want to look at and you could, you could pick the bands, you could pick all kinds of cool stuff, automatically tune the radio. The schedules, I don't use them very much, but you could pick all kinds of things from there. Now, if you're a paper chaser and you like to uh, keep track of your awards, the awards tab is fantastic. It shows you exactly what you've worked for DXCC, worked all states. Uh, as you can see, I've worked all states, but it's kind of mixed. All kinds of stuff, grids, uh, worked all zones, islands on the air. 
He's got a lot of stuff in there that's really, really cool. And up at the top on each one, it shows you exactly how many you've worked and confirmed. Moving along to the Memories tab, this is a master list of uh, just a plethora of things you can go out and listen to. You can go onto the scanner list and enter your own stuff that you'd like to scan. And then the QSL portion here, this is another very cool one. You can electronically send out QSLs to one or a hundred different guys uh, with the click of a button. You can email them, you can print them, uh, you can mark them as sent. There's a history tab here, and I really don't know what that is good for. I never use it, and I think it might be just kind of a wasted tab. The labels is kind of interesting. You can actually uh, grab as many guys as you want and print up labels, mailing labels. Now under preferences, this is the engine that makes this thing run and this is how you configure everything in uh, MacLogger DX. You can see you can uh, define all your radios, you could define how you're logging, who you're logging with, uh, the radios tab is really, really interesting because there's a huge list of radios that you can define from. I've got my uh, K3 and my 7100 defined because those are the two radios I have. If you have a uh, compatible rotor and there's a list of the rotors, you can uh, also define those. There's a huge list of contests that you can scroll through and... Uh, Oh, let's just pick uh, my favorite, the California QSO party. You can also define what, uh, what you want to show in your contest mode, which is, again, up at the top. Alarms is an interesting um, concept here. You can define all kinds of things in there that'll warn you or tell you uh, when certain entities are on the air and where they are, if it sees them in the spots. You can define how the maps feature works from there, and you could define also any modes you want to run. You can define what you want to see in your logs, what you want to see in your reports, and you can configure uh, your band plan. And last, you can define exactly how you want your clusters and your spots to work. You can reject calls and do all kinds of cool stuff there. Now there's a ton more stuff when we get up to the, um, uh, the top menus there, or the, the menu bar. Uh, there's all kinds of cool stuff You've got all your standard about and everything. You've got a clock feature that uh, puts a floating UTC clock up here. And we'll just move that clock. Well, let's put it right there for the moment. And then we can go back to the uh, menu and look at it. Uh, you could put the bearing in there, which is off on the right-hand corner. It has a ton of functions on the file menu where you can open new logs, close logs, import, export, uh, do a lot of cool stuff there. There's a pretty standard edit mode there where you can define fonts. Uh, wow, just a ton of stuff. And I don't want to go through the whole thing, but you know, logging maps, everything's got keyboard shortcuts for it. You could detach the windows. You can look up calls. Now let's detach a window and uh, we'll show the band window. I'll move that right in here and yeah, we'll stick it down there in the log. And so you can have that floating on top. Now the log menu uh, allows you to do a ton more stuff. You could focus call signs. You could go to Google Earth, Google Maps. Uh, you can delete stuff in club log. You can update, upload. Uh, you could do stuff right there, upload selected QSOs to uh, eQSL right there from the menu. Uh, you could do stuff to QRZ. 
You could confirm your QSLs with an external ADIF file, which I do all the time. You could do reports, contest helpers, uh, a lot of stuff that I haven't even used in here. Shortcuts are uh, are pretty uh, pretty cool. The focus VFO is you can move that VFO right there if you want to just kind of look at it or move it around on your own. So I've been using MacLogger now for about four years, and uh, and yeah, I uh, I bought it. And I like it. I've watched it grow from, you know, from a fairly simple piece of software to what it is today. And yeah, it's not HRD. But then again, um, I've heard the I've heard the stories of, of HRD and, and the support. And I want to tell you that the owner of uh, Dog Park Software and MacLogger is a guy by the name of Don Agro, VE3VRW. He's out of Canada. And I'll tell you what, this guy is tops in customer service. And really, when you pay $95 for logging software, you are paying for customer service. I want to tell you a little story. Yesterday, I was getting ready to put the show together and I fired up my Mac logger and lo and behold, uh, the last update that I did on my log and I downloaded one of them funky ADIFs from uh, EQSL and I, I was trying to screw around and, and do a quick import instead of, uh, uh, instead of doing it manually like I had been doing and I corrupted my database. I thought my entire log was gone. But a uh, couple of quick emails to Don and I sent him off my uh, database file and within hours he had fixed my database, uh, told me, hey, just fire this one up. I did, everything was perfect, it was back to normal. And um, that's, uh, That'll show me from for trying to screw around with EQSL's uh, funky uh, ADIF format. But anyway, that's what you're paying for. You're not paying for uh, you're not paying just for the software. You're paying for the support behind it. And I'll tell you what, uh, for the for the few dollars that I've invested in this I've gotten a lot out of it Don is constantly making updates and improvements to the software there's literally hundreds of radios that he supports and um, and he's instituting all kinds of new features all the time this is his full-time business anyway um, is MacLogger perfect? Probably not. Nothing is, but it is a good piece of software. And if you're on the Mac platform and you want a nice seamless running uh, ham shack using the Mac, MacLogger is a real good option for you. And I'll tell you, yeah, you can do some free software and, and get by with it and it'll do the logging. But uh, this has a lot of really cool features and it's going to have even more cool features in the future. And I'm not getting paid in any way from Don Agro. Uh, I'll tell you, I bought the software like everybody else. I use the software like everybody else and I'm a believer in it. I'm just telling you my position. No freebies here. No paid sponsorships or anything. Last thing on the agenda for the year. I've had, uh, I've had a lot of guys ask me over the past several months, you know, what's in your ham shack? What do you got there? So I'm going to give you the one minute tour of my ham shack. 
all of my main stuff, my tower is a US Towers 40 foot uh, tilt over push up with a hex beam. I'm using an iMac, a 27 inch iMac with a second monitor to run everything. I use a blue Yeti mic for voiceovers and I've got the uh, K3S P3 and the speaker. I can switch between mic and headset with the MFJ switching unit. I have the, uh, the clock that I've gone through before and I use an IC7100 for D-Star communications. Here's a look at the top of my desk. I've got a CDE rotor, uh, my on-air sign, my open spot, and uh, my DV Mega and the other junk on top. I've got an ID5100 and everything's run through MacWagger DX on the um, uh, Mac side. On the far side I keep my power supply, the external tuner for the 7100, the uh, 7100 itself and the 5100. Moving down below there, separate monitor just for the P3 and rounding it out is the Amp and Elecraft tuner. So that's it guys, there's the one minute tour of my shack. Hey, happy new year. Guys, I just launched a new Patreon page. I would love for you to go over there and take a look at it. And if you think it's, uh, if you think I'm worthy of it, please contribute. It's gonna help me uh, fund the channel after a year of doing this uh, out of my pocket, I have literally spent hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars doing this. And I love doing it, but uh, I need a little help. And uh, Patreon is a way that you guys can help me do this. So go on over to my Patreon page. Take a look. I'm going to be offering special stuff on Patreon just for guys that are investors in the channel. Okay, guys, I have had a great year. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being part of my uh, part of my ham shack and uh, and being my being my friends. Man, I, I'll tell you what, I am impressed. You guys are you guys are okay in my book. Um, as always, if you like my videos, thumbs up. Please comment. Please uh, share, like, spread the word. You know what it is. And uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit subscribe right now and you'll get notified of all my new videos. That's it for me for 2016. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3.